Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how to make a bed. Now this is a full size bed, but remember you can change the dimensions to fit anything you want. Follow the link in the description to the written article where I'll give you more information. But for now, let's get started on Modern Builds. This project is built out of really simple materials, 1x4s, 1x2s, and 2x2s. And I started by cutting those 1x4s to length. My most recent bed video used a lot of pocket holes, and I don't want to use that on this project, so I'll be making butt joints and screwing and gluing my pieces together. Now I did use my pocket hole drill bit to make a recess for these screws to go into, but you could just use a 3 8 inch drill bit and it'll work just as well. These recesses will allow the screws to sit beneath the surface of the wood, then I can come back with a dowel and plug them up. Next, I cut my 1x2s to length, and these are going to make up the rails that the slats will eventually set on. I glued and screwed them to the inside of my 1x4s on the frame. On my 1x4s that make up the sides of the frame, the 1x2s extended all the way to the edge. But, on the 1x2s for the shorter pieces, I used a spacer, which was just two 1x4s, so that I had room for those to set inset. This space allows the side pieces to be inset on the head and foot pieces. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. Once I laid everything out, I could attach a little bit of glue to each of my joints and then screw them together, making sure to keep everything super square. Because I used a 3 8 inch drill bit, I got a 3 8 inch dowel to plug all of those holes. And I cleaned it all up later on with a flush trim saw. A 2x2 support in the center of the frame helped strengthen everything up, although I'll be adding quite a few more supports later on in the build. The slats were really simple to lay out. I used a 1x4 to start it, then a 1x4 to space out each of my slats. That way everything was even and consistent. This was plenty strong for the platform. And with the platform finished, it was time to move on to making the base, which is built completely out of 2x2s. I just set up some marks on my miter saw and I was able to cut all of my pieces to length right away. Sometimes I need to make repeatable cuts that are too short for a stop block, so making this little mark is a quick way to get that repeatability, and I can come back with some mineral spirits or acetone and clean up the miter saw later. And now I could lay out all of my pieces and glue and screw everything together. Now I don't show gluing all of my joints here on out just for the sake of time, but just know I add a dab of glue to every joint, making sure to work it in to the end grain. Next I needed to flip my platform upside down to attach the base, and I pre-drilled holes so that everything would screw together easily. But, I noticed my buddy Gary came around for a snack, so I had to feed him first. Look at him. He's so cute. I want to give a huge thanks to this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with over 19,000 classes and courses in photography, videography, and productivity. So whether you're interested in starting a business, learning a new skill, or stepping up your Instagram game, Skillshare is the place to do it. Last month, I took the course iPhone and VSEO, Develop Your Photography Style by Monica Galvin. I wanted to get a more consistent look across my Instagram photos and to just have those photos look better in general. But now that I've mastered VSCO, it's what I use all the time. I use it to edit my Instagram photos, my beauty shots of my final projects, even my video thumbnails go through VSCO and get graded. Usually a Skillshare membership would cost right around 10 bucks a month, but right now, for the first 499 people to sign up through the link down in the description, we'll get their first two months of Skillshare totally free. Last time we did this, memberships went quick, so don't wait and learn something new. Thanks Skillshare! Now I didn't realize it up until this point, but the base is relatively short and I had to angle my drill to get the screws in there. Everything worked out great, but in hindsight, I might have put this together a little differently if I had thought about that. I also added 2x2 two two stretchers along each side of the bed, and as you can see here, I have two screws intersecting at that joint. One, that's why I'm using glue so it's strong, but I also offset the screws so that they wouldn't run into each other. It worked out fine. I tested the bed out and it had a little bit of movement, but with a mattress and the weight being dispersed, it probably would have worked fine. But this is YouTube and I like to overbuild, so I added some supports to make everything a little bit stronger. The leg in the center of the bed is crucial to making it sturdy, and trust me, it works. I 
After I trimmed the dowel's flush, I sanded everything first with 150 grit and then with 220. It's been a minute since I've stained anything and out here in California there is a Verithane wood stain. So I'm gonna give this a shot. It's called American Walnut. Wish me luck. Applying stain really is pretty simple. I just don't do it very often, but I thought this bed would look great with a little bit of a darker color. I applied the stain liberally and then wiped off the excess about five minutes later. Then I put on three coats of Verithane polyurethane to go along with it. So I really like the bed, but I think it's a little bit plain, maybe a little bit basic without a headboard. Boring. <laughs> so I have an idea of how to attach some 1x4s onto the wall so that everything gets tied together and becomes one neat, clean piece. Oh, and the best part, you don't even have to use screws. It's not going to hurt the wall at all. Check this out. While I was at Home Depot, I saw these command strips and they're made for hanging heavy frames. I think this set holds up to 16 pounds. And since a board weighs about two pounds, I thought these would be a great way to make a temporary headboard if you're renting a space or you're not able to drill into the walls. All I did was line up the first board, making sure that it was level. And then I used some scrap one by fours to space the rest of the boards out. If you plan on building this project for yourself, make sure and follow the link down in the description to the written article on my website. I'm gonna have a cut list for a full-size bed. If you're building a queen or a king, you're gonna have to do math, I'm sorry. But I will have a SketchUp file that you can download and edit, so hopefully that makes your life a little bit easier. If you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you stick around. Maybe watch a couple videos. How about that bed that I built last week? Or a random video here that YouTube suggests. I don't know, hopefully they do a good job. And if you haven't already, make sure and subscribe. That way you can stay updated every time I post a new project video. Finally, if you're not following me on Instagram, I got amazing stories. I'm talking killer Instagram stories. And good posts. It is at Modern Builds. So thanks everybody for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your week and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds.